Hi friends, I am Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. We have been painting a lot of winter flowers during this month and today I'm gonna show you how to paint Poisettia flower. And this is a beautiful flower and this is perfect for painting in layered transparent technique. And I hope you really enjoy the process and get some Christmas vibes. Let's start. For painting Poisettia, I prepared very diluted mix of permanent red. You could use any red, what you like. And Berlin green, it's um, bluish, dusty green. And let's start, let's find the center of the flower, which we would not touch. We leave the area white. And with very light red color, I put my brush on a tip and then I apply pressure. I paint a petal and I go back and distribute the color down. And even I leave some white areas to bring some variety. At the same time, while there area is still wet, I add a little bit of Berlin green right in this red area. A little bit of Berlin green around and distribute it a little bit. I wash my brush and with the tip of the brush I outline with red I go along the edge of the petal. Sometimes I apply more pressure, sometimes I apply a little bit less pressure. And um, that's how I create these um, outlined transparent texture. Placentia flower is perfect for painting transparent, painting in transparent technique. And I will show you how, how to do it. First, we prepare the area, uh, relatively wet. When, uh, after that, we fill in the area with some Berlin green, or oh, yes, with Berlin green along the edges, just like this. And then with another brush, with the tip of the brush, go a little bit along the edges. Sometimes apply more pressure, sometimes make an um, empty spot. What's always nice is to add some contrast to the top of the petal. You could add a middle, wine and some details while the paper is still wet. Let's paint another petal. This time I will grab more of green color, but principle is the same. I apply a little bit more pressure. I distribute very diluted mixture evenly. I try to avoid puddles. I go along the edge with more bold mix. Apply a little bit more pressure, a little bit less pressure. And um, right now it looks a bit too dark. So I go on the top with red, with red mix, and just let watercolor do its job, work by itself. I almost do not interfere into the process. Um, and if I want to, I need to wash my brush, dry my brush with paper towel, and then very gently correct what I want to correct, for example. Um, let's paint another petal, uh, again with Berlin green. Uh, you see why it's handy to have a bigger brush. It covers the bigger area and we have a little bit more time to 
mm, to add details and other hues. For example, here I would like to add a little bit of olive green. It brings nice contrast to these gold colors. Soften it. And I really like this color combination of Berlin green and permanent red. It looks very Christmassy. This, um, this green and red, very traditional, very <laughs> recognizable. This area looks a bit weird, so I dry my brush. And while it is still wet, I just go along the edge and soften it. I could even make um, something reminding of a middle wine. Now I want to proceed with red, with permanent red. So I just shape the petal. I like to add some dynamics, some variety to petals and um, of course some different hues while the uh, area is still wet while the paper is still wet it's really nice to play around the trick is that i do not go with the bold color inside inside the petal i just add some outlines a little bit more a little bit less the only thing i could do inside is to map out the middle line but um, you should be very careful let's dry this layer completely now the first layer is dry and let's build up our poisettia it it is it looks like a pyramid with bigger diameter of petals on the bottom and the small and small and smaller on the top now we are painting the second layer and we have to keep in mind it should be within uh, the big circle so uh, the principle is the same i have very diluted red mix and i paint another petal and i go bravely on the intersected areas but what's necessary you try to be very gentle when you paint on the intersected areas very gentle i almost do not apply any pressure to these um to these areas and principle is the same once you finish with shaping the petal you go around and add some bold um, some bold color i uh, take the bold color directly fro from the palette because um, it really creates nice bold contrast uh, let's paint another petal uh, we placing them in the chest principle so in the gaps of um, the first layer but try to avoid be too symmetrical and I would emphasize it's again uh, it's again be very gentle on the intersected areas you could be very uh, intense when you're outside, but inside try to be very, very careful. Uh, this carefulness, it also depends on the type of paper which you use. With papers uh, like Arsh or Fabriano paper with 300 grams and 100% of cotton, you have a bigger room for applying layers for painting in multi-layer technique and um, the colors are usually better sink into the paper so less uh, afraid of damage um, here i use a paper with 200 grams and 
I could get beautiful result. The only thing I have to be a little bit more careful and gentle when painting. I mix red and green and I really like this, uh, how they intersect, how they um, mix one with the other and it brings really, really, really nice Christmassy idea to the flower. And that's what we actually need. So, one more. Um, try to keep the middle part very um, free. Try, do not start your petals from the very middle, leave some area. Some of olive green is nice. Um, you see, it's um, always uh, the same trick. Always the same trick, and that's how we create this transparency. And you need to be a little bit quick <laughs> while this area is wet, and to be very patient once you finish with uh, with the layer and um, get to painting something what is intersected. Very gentle. Very gentle. The um, better you dried the previous layer, the more easy it will go with all this overlapping. Mm -hmm. You could um, really right now you could add a lot of variety with mixing colors. I really like how this um, distributes, uh, how the colors mix one with the other. I just need to apply some help. Let's dry this layer. Our second layer is dry. Now we are going to paint the final layer. That's the third diameter, which is smaller and more intense. I make a little bit more bold mix instead of diluted one. I try to place um, the petals in between all the gaps so we could really see the beauty. And um, that's also how we create the volume. Right now you see I'm slightly more careful than usual because we already have two layers of watercolors and it's um, it's important not to destroy the previous two layers. Again, if you paint on the paper 300 grams and it's cotton, really no need to worry. I want to show you that it's possible to paint in the same technique on different papers. Just um, keeping in mind a few, <laughs> few tips, few moments. Nice interesting thing what we could do now is wash the brush dry the brush with the paper towel and blot the middle part and suddenly it has uh, this petal has its um, beautiful transparency as well Uh, this area has a lot of dark green and I'm very careful in this area. I'll better, I will better dry my brush and blot out a little bit than uh, to go extra time around. So 
so I uh, my goal is to show you how you could achieve this transparency feeling with different techniques or with different approaches depending on um, you know on which layer you are on which paper you work in and encourage you just to try it out it's, it's a beautiful technique a little bit more and a little bit more try to vary the shape of these petals and of course emphasize the edges with very very super super very bold outline but avoid outlining like uh, kids do uh, the whole area always leave some gaps maybe one last petal here while this area is getting dry I, with the tip of the brush i would like to add a few details it could be middle vines some side vines maybe um, some extra outlines just um, very randomly it's important that you do not go too much into details details are beautiful but not overdo it um, wh while you add outlines and details of course you could vary the color on your brush for example right now i will change to perlin green and add some details with perlin green And now let's finish our painting with the beautiful center. I will take olive green and paint small little mm, circles, dots in the middle. That, that's why it was important to leave a white area in here because we can't apply um, lighter color on the darker color let's wait a little bit and then with the very tip of the brush just add some tiny little drops around some tiny little drops and some um, more like dashed lines which uh, will show us that this is this end of uh, the petals, how they connect to, um, uh, to the pestle, to the middle area of the flower. What I like to do is final touches to add more contrast to the very middle. And I do it just with the tip of the brush, with the bold, green it's berlin green uh, also bold red will work uh, it's just to add the depth to the flower center don't go too much aside just within this maybe two centimeters radius and this is it Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you liked this transparent technique, which is very special, very beautiful. I'm looking forward to see your paintings. Tag me on Instagram, olga.kölsch. 
subscribe my channel and see you next time. Bye bye.